Welcome to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish along with Davis Matt. We got plenty to cover here on today's show. We're, of course, going to talk some Major League Baseball full schedule on the DFS slate. Of course, afternoon games and evening games as well. So, Davis will get right to that. We'll talk a little football as well, mix in some basketball, free agency. And, Davis, of course, last night uh, we saw some real aces on the mound again. I was in South Florida watching. Uh, Shohei Otani for the first time play in person. It was the uh, first time I had seen him play, uh, watching Mike Trout, too, um, play against the Miami Marlins. But uh, they ran into Sandy Alcantara, who's been the best pitcher in baseball all season long. Um, but I got to tell you, a lot more talk, I think, nationally, probably about the Angels. And Davis, I know we've talked about them at the beginning of the season, and you wonder how they can have the talent that they have, especially with those two players, and lose as many games as they have. I mean, my gosh, it is a little embarrassing when you watch them play with them striking out 10, 12 times a game, not scoring runs. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, uh, I, I thought the same thing as you. I thought they'd be pretty decent, but they don't look that way. It uh, it stinks. I mean, they they spend all this free agency money on Rendon. He stinks. They get the crazy Taylor Ward performance. He's really come back down yeah. to earth. Uh, you know, Brandon Marsh and these guys, they have made marginal improvements, but just as a team – the bottom half, I mean, pretty much any day you, you go and you check the Angels lineup and six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, these are going to be quad A players. These are going to be Mendoza line players. They just, the bottom half of their lineup stinks. They don't, I mean, really, Otani is their best pitcher. There was, you know, some hope that center guard would be one of these guys. And I was pretty optimistic when the Angels got off to a hot start. I thought, okay, maybe this will yeah. be a team that buys at the deadline. Just doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, I have seen Trout in person couple times they uh if you if you really mm -hmm. want to turn all the way back they did play against my kansas city royals in the 2014 playoffs but uh, have not seen otani in person which is a real bummer because obviously that's uh it's one of my guys i love shohei otani so i would like to accomplish that pretty soon you know what's really interesting about him before we get to our headlines davis is that i guess this kind of slid by me a little bit and it's just you know some food for thought for the future with as good as otani is davis he does not take batting practice. I don't know if you knew this before, but he does not take batting practice. He hits in like a cage before the game. He does not come out. I mean, I saw him for like 10 seconds and he's pitching tonight. So I guess that'll be the same thing. But can you imagine a Major League Baseball literally going walking on the field, going into a game and not taking BP? It's like not practicing before the game. That's how good this guy is. I mean, it's wild. Well, it's uh, so if I understand it, um, Otani, I think it was last off season. He changed the way he got ready for games cha and, and changed the way he was getting ready in the, the preseason as well, because for him, it's all about wear and tear, right? That's it. So it's just yep. all, it's just all about like no extra swings, no extra pitches, because I mean, think about what he is asking his body to do just from like, like a physiological level. He is, he is trying to play 150 games as a hitter uh, and, and what get 20, 25 starts. Like the, the workload that he is putting on his central nervous system is so insane. So it, I, but, and whatever, obviously whatever he's figured out has worked because remember Craig, it was last off season. We were talking like, we don't know if we'll ever see this guy play a full season. And, True. and he really has, has figured something out. Yeah, and, and listen, I'm I'm on board with you. He's the MVP of the league every year he plays. Uh, not going to win it every year, but he should be because no one's ever done this before. Uh, but last night, Miami's uh, pitcher just way too much for the Angels, and, and he's been as good as anybody, I, I think, this year. All right, let's get to our headlines here on the show. Eloy Jimenez is going to be activated by the Chicago White Sox, and, uh, and he'll be back on the field. Good news for him. I know that Davis has been big on Eloy for years, so have I, but injuries have derailed everything with him. Max Scherzer struck out 11 and gave up no earned runs in his return to the Mets. And uh, he'll pitch again on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Chet Holmgren shines in the Summer League debut as the Oklahoma City Thunder beat the Utah Jazz. And Thomas Bryant signs a deal with the Los Angeles Lakers. Boy, as hot as everything was with the NBA, Davis, what's going on? The last couple of days, not much happened. Only TJ Warren, Thomas Bryant. Well, it's all, I mean, everyone is in a holding pattern. Anyone wanting to accomplish trades, anyone wanting to do anything with the remaining free agents, everyone is waiting on the Brooklyn Nets and Kevin Durant because the worst case scenario is you use up some of your cap room or you trade, you know, you do a pick swap in 2027 right. that could have been used to acquire Kevin Durant. Or conversely, you know, I think if you want to take it a layer deeper, I think a lot of these teams are also waiting to be facilitators as a third team or a fourth team 
in a potential mega trade. So maybe you're taking on Kyrie Irving. Maybe you're taking on Ben Simmons. You know, uh, just uh, you, you could be taking on Nick Claxton. Just any of these guys. Like, and I think the Lakers. You know, they clearly they want to reunite Kyrie Irving with LeBron James. So th- that pretty much opens up all 30 teams in the NBA because someone's got to eat Westbrook's contract, right? Forty-seven and a half million dollars. Someone's got to take that contract on. So nothing is happening into the NBA until Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant have decided on their next locations, basically. Yeah, makes sense for sure. Hopefully that will happen soon. But until then, we roll on. And coming up next, it's time for us to take a look at the Daily Fantasy Slate in Major League Baseball. So stay on the grid for that. As Davis and I will be back in just a couple of minutes going over all of that information. So stay with us. We got, of course, plenty of information coming your way also on uh, the upcoming NFL season, fantasy football season is almost upon us. And uh, a couple weeks from now, Davis and I are going to be rolling out all of our fantasy football content. So stay on the grid for that. As a matter of fact, just found out the other day, uh, Sunday mornings, our fantasy football show will be back on the air in August. So uh, that's coming soon too. Can't wait to get that started as well. But up next, baseball takes center stage. We'll set a DFS lineup for you. Coming up next, get out your DraftKings app. We will help you. Don't go away. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. It's better to be in your skate than it is your sneakers because you don't your your foot's going like this, right? It's, it it immobilizes your foot in your boot. It's a I'm cast. Like, oh, this dude's good to go. We're watching the warm ups, trying to get a feel. Guys flying around like nothing. I mean, he's he's for sure. I, I've been told there's like at least five or six guys that have broken feet. Ah, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's like it's nuts, man. They're blocking shots. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Alan Lazard being talked up here, DRS, as wide receiver one in Green Bay. It just feels like an appropriate time to remind people that, again, a team that has the back-to-back MVP on it in the Green Bay Packers actively tanked their wide receiver room somehow this offseason? Only on SportsGrid. Fantasy Sports Today. Frustrating season, I think, for a lot of people last year owning Javante Williams. What do you think ends up happening here? Because I know what everybody wants in fantasy, but that's not the way it is. It is really unbelievable just how much they split work right down the middle. They both had exactly 203 carries last season. Javante had 1,200 scrimmage yards. Melvin Gordon had 1,100 scrimmage yards. Javante scored seven touchdowns. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I'm telling you, I wouldn't stop there. I'm, I'm asking for a number one as well. My goal would be to, as the GM, would be to get every talented player I can for him, because that's what he's worth. But when they got for Gobert, get every talented player you got in a traffic. My goal is to leave you naked at the altar when it's all said and done. You got Durant, you got Thompson, you got Dre Green. The Sports Grid Network. Great, great. 
Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. We're going to go over the daily fantasy slate in Major League Baseball. Davis Maddock, Craig Mish, back with you. Of course, Dubs is joining us. In just a few minutes from now, we're going to go over the Scottish Open coming up this weekend. Davis, how's the slate look for uh, Major League Baseball tonight? Looks like a nice mix and match of pitching and hitting. And, you know, certainly I guess that's the generic way to call it. But uh, you give me the overview on it. Yeah, we have, uh, well, we have a nice little day game slate today, four games uh, going off right around 1 o'clock Eastern time. So then our night slate is eight games. Uh, Temperatures are rising across the United States of America right now. That's kind of been a consistent theme. But it's like, uh, I've I've noticed that it's really starting to have an impact on totals. You know, remember that first month of the season, we were seeing six and a half, seven, seven and a half was just like kind of the, the normal total we're seeing them. Yeah. I mean, even, even games with like good starting pitchers, like, you know, for example, the, uh, the Max Fried miles, Nicholas starts like that run, that total is like a run higher than it would have been two months ago because, well, I mean, you would know more about this than I would, but I, I have a sense that the ball, something has happened with the ball. Something has either happened with the ball or with the humidor. And then the temperatures have had an impact on that as well. And then also kind of interestingly, like there are a bunch of starters on this slate who just kind of have a wide range of outcomes, like guys who, you know, could go seven clean innings or give up four earned runs in two innings and be out of there, you know, kind of your Josiah Gray, Alex Cobb uh, grouping of guys. So I, I kind of always like slates like this because there is nothing better than taking a hitter who has the platoon advantage on a pitcher who's like kind of owned, you know, 15 20% owned and then having that guy hit a home run. I mean, that is just great leverage. I always, uh, I always really enjoyed that. It's one of my favorite things in DFS. All right. So let's break it down for you here and give you the two pitchers that Davis is choosing today. Aaron Nola of the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies are playing pretty good baseball, even without Bryce Harper. He's priced over at 10,000, 10,100. And then Luis Severino will be the other choice for you, Davis, and uh, priced uh, below Nola at 9,100. So I think that Severino is just obvious. I mean, the Pittsburgh Pirates are are just, I mean, we want to use everyone against them, right? I mean, we're throwing we're throwing Mitch Keller. We're throwing Helen Keller. It just does not matter against the, the Pittsburgh Pirates. They are no good. Severino was really strong to start the year. He's been a little bit more average over his last three starts. But you look at who he's faced. He was home against the Astros, road against the Astros, and in the uh, in the Rogers Center against the Toronto Blue Jays, and he was fine in those starts. Severino also is one of these guys in Major League Baseball who who pretty comfortably can get over a hundred pitches. That that's a huge deal on DraftKings, right? You know, you're getting the extra inning, maybe extra inning and a half, maybe extra chance of a strikeout or two. But even more importantly, some of these guys that we've talked about this season you know, your, your Hunter greens, like these guys are, are not getting deep enough into games to be in line for the win. So it doesn't matter if they're minus 200 favorites, they might not get to the fifth inning right. or get out of the fifth inning to be in line for the win. Severino should easily be able to hang around long enough to get in line for the win tonight against the pirates. And then Nola, I mean, I would imagine that he is going to be 30 to 40% owned. He's been over uh, 20 fantasy points in each of his last five starts. He steamrolled through the Braves in his last starts. His last start uh, against the Washington Nationals was two weeks ago. He had eight strikeouts. He got eight innings, uh, only four hits allowed, zero walks in that start. And the Nationals, I mean, kind of like the Pirates, they are just, they are a tough watch right now, the, the <laughs> Washington Nationals. So I think I think these two starting pitchers are pretty obvious here. Yeah, Nationals are uh, not playing their best baseball this year. I guess that's the kind way to put it. Um... You know, those two teams in the NL, Cincinnati, I think, is the third. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup tonight. Adley Rutschman gets the call from Davis behind the plate. He's at 4,400. Yulioski Guriel of Houston, just under 4,000. We're going minimum price here for Bryson Stott of Philadelphia. Nolan Arenado of the Cardinals, 4,900. And Jeremy Payne, who's had a really nice season for Houston. He is priced at 4,200 tonight on DK. Yeah, he has been he has been phenomenal, right? He hit uh, he hit the the walk off home run the other night. I mean, and it's actually crazy. Like, what an embarrassment of riches for the Houston Astros that on a normal night, Jeremy Pena bats seventh for them. Now, right now, he's batting second due to some injuries that they've had in their lineup, which is why he is going to make it into our lineup tonight. Obviously, don't love to pay forty two hundred dollars for a guy batting seventh, although. 
I mean, with the Astros, you could you could make the case that the seventh hitter on the Astros is like the fifth hitter on any other team because of how many runs they score. Like the the plate appearance expectation for the seventh hitter on the Astros is pretty solid. Uh, and I just I just think the Astros are in a pretty phenomenal spot tonight. My Kansas City Royals, um, they don't have good starting pitching. They don't have a good bullpen. They are just they are just not uh, limiting runs against anyone. And uh, it is, you know, of course, a billion degrees there in Houston right now. Roof is open. The ball is flying. And uh, let's let's just call it a hunch on Nolan Arenado tonight. He is up against Max Breed, a good, not great in my opinion, starting pitcher. But Arenado is, uh, you know, just for his whole career, he has been so good against left-handed starting pitching. I don't. I, I would imagine that he is going to be sub five percent owned tonight in that semi. Difficult matchup. Bryson Stott is our salary filler here. The Phillies scored, I believe, eleven runs last night. They were just uh, they were just one of those teams. Stott got on base twice. He's he's mostly fine. Guriel is finally starting to come around. He has been he is uh, you want to talk about disappointing fantasy assets this season. Uh, he was you know kind of expected to be an on base batting average guy. Don't love when your batting average guy is batting 227, but he is finally starting to get on base a little bit more here. And then, uh, you know, same deal for Rutschman, obviously one of these guys who was uh, super, super touted, one of the one of the best prospects in baseball, hit a home or a, a, had a bases clearing double the other night. He has been uh, he's been fine since coming up, but I I do like this matchup for the Orioles tonight uh, against Glenn Otto. And uh, I just, I always, I just like to find a catcher who bats a little bit higher in the lineup as well. Yeah, Orioles uh, played a little better so far this season. I know they have a tough streak going now. All right, let's get to the outfield. Giancarlo Stanton of the Yankees. Going to be uh, the one that Davis is counting on tonight, that's for sure. Cody Bellinger, priced tonight, if I'm not mistaken, at 3,700. Uh, his, boy, his lineup position has fluctuated a lot. I've seen him batting eighth in some spots. And then Jake Myers uh, for Houston, uh, finally healthy, missed the first two months of the season. He is now back. He is 2,200 tonight. He had a good year last year when he played. Yeah, so Bellinger, I mean, Craig, you know, he's just kind of one of my my pet projects at this point. You know, kind of kind of like Javi Baez, uh, just just one of these guys. He he's going to hit for power. He's going to steal. He just is not going to get on base very much. And just in general, you know, it's kind of some some good advice is lower owned parts of the Dodgers batting order whenever they are facing a a average or below average starting pitcher, which I believe Jose Urania is. I mean, that, that goes for Gavin Lux. Gavin Lux is, is kind of a mainstay of my MLB mm-hmm. daily fantasy lineups because I mean, I, I think if Lux was on, you know, if Lux was on the Yankees, if he was on the Astros, the Blue Jays or whatever, he would be batting second or fifth. I think he's really good. Uh, and the same thing is true for, uh, for Bellinger. And then I went with Stanton, over judge tonight just based on just based on ownership i mean judge uh it, it doesn't matter I, I think they could price judge at like seven thousand, and he would still coal a bunch of ownership honestly so going with stanton over judge tonight and then jake myers is our uh, our salary relief there at 2200 i think he should bat tonight for the houston astros and uh we will we will take that yeah I, i'm actually shocked i don't see otani starting yeah, no, no Otani for us here tonight. Uh, no. Just didn't uh, did not have the salary room for him. Uh, I mean, he is he is always uh, quite expensive, and they they are up against Trevor Rogers, who is like a yeah. I mean, you, Trevor Rogers is your guy, right? That's uh, that's your guy. He hasn't done well. <laughs> hasn't looked good this season. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, Craig, he loves he loves Trevor Rogers, even though Trevor Rogers has not uh, has not exactly delivered the results. Uh, we are going to go ahead and run into break here real quick on fantasy sports today. Here in just a moment, I'm going to be joined by Dubs Anderson. We're going to talk a little bit of Scottish Open, always the warm up event for the Open Championship. So don't go anywhere, Dubs, and I'll be talking the golf here in just a moment. See you then. Break, break. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. 
playing less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penguins. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game, oh, live, man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The Pat McAfee Show. He would be quite a baby face, oh, though, yeah. if he said, I wasn't expecting to tell you guys what Sue was uh, wanting to rule, but she said eight games is what they decided mm -hmm. on. That's cute, Sue. 17 games plus playoffs, Roger Goodell. I like he, he gets a big, big I, he gets a big applaud. Oh, he, he probably ends up on the 60 under 60 list or 70 under 70 <laughs> list. Thousand percent. Of like baby faces in the world yeah. if he does that. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. Reality of the situation is the brand names still rue the day. Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia, Notre Dame, and Oklahoma. Six programs. In the eight years we have seen a college football playoff, 32 available spots. Those six teams have taken 25. Those odds would indicate to me, DRS, we expect these four teams back in the college football playoff once again. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. We do have now player over unders for the season for total yards. Rodgers right now is at 4,120. What do you think about that over under for a passing yards prop on Rodgers? I mean, even though he did lose his best overall weapon in Devontae Adams, if you take a look at outside the one, what, 2017 season where he was injured, he's had five straight seasons of above 4,000 yards. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. This guy tonight, he'll have four and a half strikeouts. Listen to this. In the first inning. In the first inning. Now remember, there's only three outs in the first inning. He will have this over done so fast tonight, make your head spin. He's going to have at least eight to ten strikeouts against the Pirates tonight. Oh. Run to the window. The Sports Grid Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I'm Davis Maddock, joined as always on Wednesday afternoons by my buddy. Dubs Anderson, we are always going to get into the golf and, uh, you know, depending on your point of view, pretty important week this week, the Scottish Open, which is always the warm up event for the Open Championship. And then we have the alternate field event over there, uh, the Barbasol. I, I got to be honest, I kind of enjoy these alternate field events like Chris Goddard being the favorite after making like four PGA Tour starts. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty good stuff. We have confirmation that Tiger Woods is going to be playing in the Open Championship. He played in this Pro-Am on Monday and Tuesday, the J.P. McManus Pro-Am that, of course, Xander won. You know, of course, Xander is going to win the event where there's absolutely no pressure. It's just, uh, it's just a glorified hit and giggle out there. <laughs> Yeah, look, Xander's playing at a very high clip going back to back. It was good to see Tiger Woods back on the golf course. But to be honest, Davis, he looked a little gingery out there going around the golf cart. I think he posted seven over for the two days. But again, he's just getting those final reps in. But what a tournament we have this week for the Scottish Open. You want a strong field. 14 of the top 15 in the world pegging it up. 75 of the best from Europe. 75 of the best from the PGA Tour. And now... For the live golfers allowed to compete in this one. I mean, it is going to be an absolute doozy at the Renaissance Club. But again, a week out from the next major championship, the Open Championship, some of the American guys will be tinkering with the club setup. They'll be trying to work on those low ball flights. So I don't mind some of the Euro guys this week. I don't mind the value play. But again, great golf course, very strong field. The strongest field we've ever had to date for the DP World Tour co-sanction with the PGA Tour. 
Yep, I'm totally with you. I am definitely focusing this week on uh, betting on some of our Euro friends using some of our Euro buddies over there in uh, DFS for the Scottish Open because I, th- I think you hit the nail on the head. A, a lot of these American guys, you know, Jordan Spieth and Kale and all these guys, they're they're trying to get the feel, right? So they're they're yeah. working on what they know that they're going to need to have in their locker next week. And some of these guys, I think, are going to be really geared up to win the Scottish Open, and some of them are going to be out there getting their hacks in, you know, working on what they need to do. So let's get into some of my favorite plays over on DraftKings this week, starting with Matthew Fitzpatrick, of course, major champion this year. Uh, I think it's probably a bit much to expect him to repeat uh, major championships, but his game is going to be a great natural fit for the Lynx golf that they're going to play. Of course, guys, hyper accurate. Uh, I told that story on air a couple weeks ago about how he marks everything down in his yardage book. Every single shot he makes, he's going to hit it to the exact spot he wants. Not going to need to dominate the course. And Cameron Smith, I mean, it feels like this guy is just on the boundary of becoming one of the five best players in the world. He's great off the tee. He's got a very, and I think this is very important, he's got a very creative short game, which is really going to matter in these link style golf courses. Corey Connors, I think, is just a little bit underpriced. And you know what? I'm betting on our guy, Mito Pereira. I mean, I I think he is just too talented. And he has, by the way, shown that, uh, you know, whatever mental hurdle he's going to have to overcome after kind of blowing the PGA Championship, like he has bounced back with good results. You know, the tee to green game has still been strong. I think a lot of guys in his position, I mean, you know, uh, Francesco Molinari hits the ball into the water on twelve at the masters. And we basically, yeah. we, we've never heard from him since like that was pretty much it for Francesco Molinari, but Mito has bounced back pretty well. So these are the four guys I really like this week. I love it. I think it's a great lineup. And I mean, Matty Fitzpatrick has a good run on this golf course. He was in that three-way playoff here last year when Min Woo Lee ultimately got it done. Look, what, what are we looking for? It's all about short game. It's all about grit, about grind, a bit of shot making. We're not so fast about distance and how well these guys drive it off the tee. So I love Matty Fitzpatrick. Cameron Smith, I'm also on there this week, Davis. What does he do well? The tougher golf courses bring out the best in it. He wants to be challenged. I've seen it out there on the tour. You give Cameron Smith an easy golf course, he's going to give you a couple over par. You give him a tough golf course, like we saw earlier this season at Hawaii. Earlier this season, we saw at the Players' Championship, Cameron Smith, a very dangerous man. I'd say arguably one of the best short games in the business. I'll throw a couple more flies out at at you. Tommy Fleetwood. $8,400. $8,400. Terrell Haddon at $7,800. If you're looking for a couple of Max Fly revolutions to throw on the bag for Saturday's round, don't sleep on Christian Bezade now, who punched his ticket to the Open Championship there last weekend. Great short game, great scrambling. Can he win the event? I don't know. He's won on the DP World Tour, but I think he lacks that killer instinct. But he is a top 20 finishing position machine, if you will. And another young guy to watch. He's got that European experience. Aaron Rye playing in the two gloves. He's got the iron covers on. I like the guys who are a bit more familiar playing that Lynx golf this week. But again, short game is everything for us. Yeah. All right. Then on the other side of the coin, uh, you know, I don't hate any of these guys in a vacuum, but all four of these plays I think are going to be quite owned over on DraftKings.com. And I also don't have an outright on any of these guys. Ryan Fox projects to be the most owned player this week on DraftKings, and it's a great price. He's a good golfer. He's been in phenomenal form over on the DP World Tour. So I, you know, in a vacuum, I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with him. I just don't think that he is good enough to, you know, be on 20, 25 percent of rosters. Same deal for Sam Burns, actually a top 10 golfer in the world, which I think would surprise quite a bit of people. But as a result, 9200, he's going to be pretty popular. Jordan Spieth, let me, this week, I mean, buddy, it is all about getting ready for next week. Jordan is chasing majors. That is what he cares about, which I think he should, right? You know, certainly no problems with that. That is where he should be at in his career. So this week for him, it's all going to be about ball flight, working the wedges, figuring out the greens. And then uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I don't think Xander does it three weeks in a row. That is my professional opinion. Look, the biggest curse that you can ever come up with on the PGA Tour is winning the Pro-Am. Xander Shoffley winning that JP Manus Open over there in Ireland. You don't want to do that. You don't want to win the week before the Open Championship. You're not going back-to-back at the major if you will. So I think they're great plays. Ryan Fox, the Kiwi, he's been having a good season, but I think he's going to be a little overawed by some of the big names making the trip over this week for the Scottish Open. A couple of fade plays I like this week. Scotty Scheffler, 
I'm not big on it. I mean, he's got that really high ball flight. I think that's going to get punished this week. And a guy who's at the golf course, yet to get his clubs, yet to get his luggage, young Victor Hovland, who a lot of people are going to be big on. But again, I'm big on short game. You know, the most interesting thing with Lynx golf is after the ball bounces, so much undulation and runoff, you really need to pick it up clean. Victor Hovland, I'm still concerned uh, with that aspect of his game. So again, we're not looking for the Ferrari play this week, Davis. We want the Toyota. We want reliable and consistent. That's what what's going to get it done with these DFS lineups come Sunday. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, we're we're looking for the grinders, right? Look at look at the guys who have won this event the week before the Open Championship. We got you know lifelong DP World Tour grinders. You know top fifty players in the world, but not necessarily top ten players in the world. And I think when you look at the questions of motivation, I think it makes total sense. So uh, Tiger Woods is confirmed to be playing at the Open Championship. I it's uh, I believe is at a course that he has won before. Right now on DraftKings, he is forty to one. To win this event, uh, and then if you you know if you if you quarter those numbers, if you take that number by ten, you're going to get his top five, top ten odds. DraftKings does not have those posted as of this morning. Um, I mean, it's very sad for me. Tiger, great for the game, love him, but uh, I I just his best golf to me is behind him. If he's going to win another major, if he's going to do it, I, I think it's going to be at Augusta. I think that four days of the wind and the cold and the walking is just going to be too much for him. Uh, very similar to the PGA, right? The PGA course just played really tough. It was super hot. You had to deal with the elements, and he just really fell apart and ended up withdrawing from that event. So I'm I'm not going to be on Tiger at the Open Championship. Yeah, I, I agree with that one, Davis. I mean, he, he has won at St. Andrews in 2000, 2005. I'm looking at him maybe to make it through the weekend, a top 40 play, but I'm definitely staying away in the outright market. Look, what do we know about St. Andrews? It is a very short golf course. It's flatter. That's going to help the course, but... I didn't like what I saw from Tiger Woods uh, over there in Ireland yesterday and Monday. Um, he, he was walking a little sheepishly. The game, you know, the distance control was off, which is a big concern for me, especially when you're going to play in some windier conditions. So Tiger Woods, he's going to get away from the media for the next week. He's got some hidden hideout golf course. He's going to go grind and work on the golf game. But I mean, if he's going around the golf cart on Monday and Tuesday, that tells me he's still trying to conserve his energy. There's no, you know, getting around it next week. It is a major championship. He's got that history at the golf course. He tells us it's his favorite golf course on the planet. You know, Arnold Palmer made it what it is today, um, the 150th edition. So I think with all that, going into some tougher conditions, I pray for a bit of win, Davis. I want to see these guys beat up. I'm too used to watching the John Deere Classic last week, 22 under par, birdie shootout where, you know, we're, we're testing who hits it the furthest, who's got the best lob wedge. I want to see some creativity. I want to see some shot making. I think for Tiger Woods, He's got that golf IQ. He's got that experience he can lean on. I think he makes it through the weekend, but I can't see him making a tilt at this one. I mean, Tiger Woods five years ago, different story. The young guys weren't where they were today. I mean, look at who, who we're going up right. against. Scotty Scheffler, Morikawa, Xander Shoffley, Cameron Smith, John Rahm, Roy McIlroy having a form season for him. JT, I mean, these young guys have just taken it to an all-new level. Fade anyone coming from the Live League, playing that exhibition golf, because these guys on the PGA Tour are playing at a very, very high clip right now. We say the best of the best in the world. No two ways about it. Yep. And, uh, you know, speaking of Birdie Fest, we do have our opposite field event this week, the Barbasol Championship. Honestly, I I actually love these off-field events, and I I, I got a pick for our friends here on uh, on Sports Grid. Taylor Pendrith, I, I believe that you can get him anywhere between 30 and 35 to 1, depending on what sports book you have available. He is the favorite in the field with our friends over on Data Golf. Uh, so, I, I, this opposite field event, I mean, it's probably not going to be on your TV too much, but I do really like Taylor Pendrith there. And, uh, you know, the way the schedule is going to work out, you're going to wake up, you're going to have some Scottish Open highlights going to have that round finishing and then you can switch the tv over to the barbersall championship so we got a great weekend of golf ahead dubs of course will rejoin us next week as we talk about all of our wagers and dfs options at the open championship i'm going to be rejoined by craig here in a moment on fantasy today don't go anywhere to see you back in a second Your 
hearts racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. You know, I really, really enjoy performing uh, in front of millions of people in T-Mobile Arena. Um, so I, I think it's just I just go in there, flow, and just do what I know I'm capable of doing. It's honestly hard not to be confident. I try not to be confident. It's hard. I knock so many people out of my life. It's just like, it's really hard not to be confident. So I try to stay humble, but Pat, it's hard. Yeah. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. I'm always looking to Luis Robert for some total base props. I'm always looking to Tim Anderson for some total base props, run props, wherever it might be. And that's really where I'll lean. I'm also going to be probably buying into Lance Lynn going forward at his strikeout props because we know he has that high potential. He also has a very high potential when it comes to overall pitch count where, you know, he doesn't get pulled early. He's going for 95 plus pitches. So as long as he's going to be out there, that strikeout potential is going to be pretty high. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Elijah Moore, second round pick last year, was uh, I think very good in a limited sample for the New York Jets. He averaged, this is actually true, he averaged uh, just about 8.6 fantasy points per game in games that Zach Wilson started. One small sample size, right? Anything can happen in in two, three games of football. And then I think the other thing is Zach Wilson, to me, kind of defined rookie quarterback. The Sports Grid Network. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today here on Sports Grid. You want to make sure that you are following us on social media, and here's how you do it follow us on Twitter at Sports Grid or at Sports Grid TV for the latest news, notes, information, of course, picks against the spread, and all the things that we're doing here on our great network. Follow us on Twitter at Sports Grid, at Sports Grid TV. And if you have a question for us, fantasy or reality, tag us there as well. Also tag me at Craig Mish, uh, Davis at Davis Maddock as well. And uh, Davis, we're almost upon us here for fantasy or reality. I guess the question is, over the next few days, will we have a fantasy or reality uh, surrounding Kevin Durant? I think you may be right. The longer this goes, maybe there is a chance he goes back to Brooklyn. I mean, I really hope so. Like, uh, I, I, it's just like a great summer memory, right, of thinking about all the, the, the huge transactions. Kawhi Leonard to the Raptors, of course, the decision. LeBron going back to Cleveland. Kevin Durant going to the Golden State Warriors, Kevin Durant going to the Nets. Like these are these are like core memories for me. And it shows how much of a nerd I am that I like remember where I was when all of these uh, you know, transactions broke. And uh, but I, I hope it does come soon. Cause we like Craig, in October, we do not want to be talking about Kevin Durant, you know, holding out or or no. uh, like a James Harden situation where he's showing up, but you know, kind of just playing halfway. Like we don't want to be dealing with that. So I I Hope it's soon. And then the other reason I hope it's soon is then that's going to bring a flurry of activity. And we're going to have lots of other transactions to talk about once that happens. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, certainly October, we want to be focused on football too. That's for sure. All right, let's get to some fantasy or reality. 
All right, Davis. Well, um, you know, Major League Baseball added extra teams to the wild card this year. They have added one team in the AL and one team in the NL. And we thought at the beginning of the season that maybe that would add more competitive balance to the league. And as it turns out, yeah, I think a couple of more teams maybe feel like they're in it than not. But I, I think at this point, as we stand close to 80 games played for every Major League Baseball team, we know who the contenders are. And we know who the pretenders are. And unfortunately for the Seattle Mariners, Davis, one of those teams that's definitely a pretender after a really good start in April is Seattle. And last season, Adam Frazier was a key acquisition, of course, by the San Diego Padres. Unfortunately, they didn't do much else. Frazier's a really good ball player, Davis, but he is not having a good season. He's got a negative war. Seattle's certainly trending in the wrong direction. Uh, and they're probably going to have to make a choice on Frazier coming up in a month from now because he'll be a free agent at the end of the season. So fantasy or reality, they should designate Frazier for assignment, try and push a trade now. Uh, there's a lot of other options here, though, too. What do you think, fantasy or reality? Well, I mean, it is kind of interesting because of how deep the playoffs are. So right now, the Mariners are second in their division. Now, they're not going to win the division. The Astros are no. 11 games ahead of them. But they are ahead of the Guardians. They are ahead of the White Sox. And they are only three games behind the Blue Jays and three games behind the Tampa Bay Rays, which uh, obviously is aided by the fact that they play in this terrible division. You know, if they were playing – they at least they would be you know 15 games behind they would be decimated but they play in this division with a bunch of crappy teams teams that are not trying teams that are getting really unlucky um and you're right adam frazier i mean it is it is a tough scene two home runs and two steals and 329 plate appearances 219 batting average uh his weighted on base average is a lowly lowly 259 way below his career average of 319. So honestly, I, he's got to be hurt. I, I don't really think there would be another explanation for this other than him being injured because it's not like he is like at the age where you would expect him to be falling off a cliff skills-wise. He's 30 years old. Generally speaking, when you see a skills decline like this and the walk rate stays the same, that's what you got to look for is if the walk rate is the same, that means that he still has the hands, you know, the 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 hand eye coordination and the bat speed, but it's just something is impacting him from driving the ball. So my guess would be he's got a knee injury, an elbow injury, something like that, and he just needs 15 days, 30 days to to walk it off. So I I I'm gonna go fantasy. I think that they can probably just sit him, let him come back, and actually get you know some cash or something for him. So I got I got fantasy here. Yeah, fantasy also as well for me. In a situation like this with a team, I, I don't think that Seattle's going to make the postseason. Um, but we're still a month away, you know? So, I mean, anything can kind of happen here. And if I had to guess, my guess is if they do decide to sell, they'd get something back for Frazier. And so uh, I don't think DFA is, is the nature for him. Now, again, salary is going to play a big part in this, Davis, and my guess is he will completely clear waivers because no one's going to want to pay him all the money that he's owed for the rest of the season. But Seattle will be able to work something out for him. Uh, look, they're getting a great season from Logan Gilbert. They're getting a great season from Julio Rodriguez all of a sudden. Um, yep. And your guy Robbie Ray all of a sudden – Maybe this is the corner being turned. And if that happens, then Seattle jumps back into it. But let's circle his name for the rest of the season because it hasn't been a good first half. I got fantasy. I wouldn't DFA him. I'd wait. I'd wait. But in August, maybe. Possibility. All right, let's uh, move over to college football. Yesterday, we got the news, Davis, that not just two teams were leaving the Pac-12, but it looks like six teams. So uh, next year, college football is going to be upside down from what we think. So thankfully, we have this year, and it's coming up soon to figure out all of these uh, games. But obviously, uh, some of the rivalries are going to change and and teams are going to be, you know, facing each other, East Coast, West Coast. going to be a lot more of that going on in 2023 and beyond. Fantasy or reality, Davis, you prefer regional rivalries uh, to super conferences in college sports. This is a tough question to answer here because the games, Davis, are going to be wildly more interesting and, and matchups that we haven't seen but the traditionalists are going to lose a lot in this. That's for sure. Fantasy or reality? Yeah, this is this is not hard for me. This is this is a total reality. I mean, how can we live in a world 
where Oklahoma and Nebraska do not play each other in football. I mean, that is like that to me, that really drives at the heart of it. Or how about the fact that Mizzou and Kansas don't play each other in basketball? I mean, that 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 basically just defeats the point of the sport to me. The Kansas Missouri rivalry literally goes back to the American Civil War. That's why that rivalry exists. Like it is entrenched in the history of our country why these universities don't like each other. And the fact that it's it's all being sacrificed for money, which I get. I mean, these these colleges, like, let's just be honest about it. They're running a business. They are trying to make the universities profitable. They're trying to make sure that they can pay their coaches and have the best facilities. And like, I, 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 I don't blame the colleges themselves. Mm-hmm. I just blame the society in which the colleges exist, right? Like the, 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 it's just, it's all, it's all terrible to me. I hate the idea of like USC flying to go play Rutgers on a Thursday night, like hate it. Don't like it makes college football, honestly makes college football less interesting for me. Cause I'm such a casual college football fan. I really only care about who Oklahoma plays. And like, I'm, I'm I, the idea of Oklahoma playing regular season games against Kentucky, like, that stinks. Don't like that. Really, really hate the idea of Oklahoma playing regular season games against Alabama and Georgia. Really hate that because that basically just eliminates Oklahoma's chances of ever winning a national championship for as long as I live. So hate it. Easy reality for me. Not a fan of the realignment stuff. Yeah, I'm probably not as strong on it as you. But th- this is all a question from where you came from. And it's no indictment on you, Davis, or me, or anybody else. But it, 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 I, I think you know, college sports has a much bigger appetite if you went to a school where the athletics were prominent. And it's just, I, th- I just think that's the nature and the reality of where college sports are at. So, um, you know, that being said, I went to a college that the sports were very, are very prominent in the University of Florida. And what happened for me, and it's interesting that you noted that, Davis, is that the Florida Gators, when I went to college, the biggest rival that Florida had was an out-of-conference game against Florida State. But when the, when the Southeastern Conference, Davis, started making all this money and became the, I mean, it already was the primary conference, but really became the financial primary conference, it became all about winning games in the SEC and that Florida State game where Miami or I'm sorry, where Florida would play Florida State, even though it was at a conference, didn't have the same meaning. Um, so that was always hard for me to grasp to say, wait a second, the Florida State game isn't the biggest game on the schedule. What do you mean it's Alabama? Remember, Alabama wasn't good in the 90s and 2000s. What do you mean it's LSU? Wait a second here. It, you know, it was always when when I went to Florida, it was about the Gators playing against Peyton Manning and beating them four times. So. I, I think it's cyclical. I'm going to disagree here. I'm going to say fantasy. I think we'll learn to like it like everything else. I have a feeling that's what's coming. I understand that your nature and your trepidation for these West Coast, East Coast games, it's very valid and it's very fair. But inevitably, we have a bigger problem on our hands, which is the college football championship and the college football playoff. And I think it's all going to I think this is all trending yeah. toward a better system toward that. I think that's inevitably what they're trying to find the balance in and and i think the rivalries are going to go away and it's going to be like the nfl davis where they're all playing for the end and that's all that's going to matter is playing for the playoff and playing for your conference championship is going to go away just like florida that florida state rivalry just like that not being as important anymore man i and and michigan ohio state it's only going to be important for the national championship and i think those key rivalry games are just going to be a thing of the past because you know this is going to expand man this is not going to be four teams it ain't going to be well eventually it's it's going to be be gone right it eventually it will just be no conferences and it'll work the same way the nfl does yeah 10 20 years there will just be no conferences yeah that's where we are headed it's going to be standings from the east part of the country and the west part of the country and the top 24 teams and and then and that's where we're going man And and it's all about once the nils came in it was the beginning of the end and it's and by the way it'll be fine and we'll we'll get used to it we need to make sure we are crowning the correct college football champion every year more than yeah and i'm good with i'm good with nil by the way like the nil stuff doesn't bother me me. yeah me too me me too but but i think that's the end game i think that's the end game yeah so i got fantasy i think this will be okay all right finally a uh a pigeon we go from football to pigeons a pigeon in the uk traveled four thousand miles somehow all the way 
to Alabama here in the United States and was found, uh, essentially it was a carrier pigeon. So we thought we would ask this question here on the show today. I find it interesting. Fantasy Reality Davis, you have seen a carrier pigeon. I joke around sometimes when things go a long time from coast to coast that they use the carrier pigeon. You ever seen one of these? So I'm going to guess I have not. I'm going to guess I, I did not even grow up in a city where these maybe would have ever been used. Like, do, like definitely the little town that I'm from. But I wonder, like, did Kansas City ever use carrier pigeons? Like, prop maybe? I don't know. I mean, Kansas City was, was uh, kind of late in terms of, like, large American cities. Like, it was after Chicago, after New Orleans. So I, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess that this is a fantasy. I'm going to guess that I have not. Yeah. And, and again, it, go, it goes back historically speaking. I have not seen any animal tagged that is traveling from place to place with a message. So pigeons definitely fall within that parameter. But it's crazy to think that this actually worked in the past, Davis, you know, like before phones and before telegraphs and everything else. Like you literally would put a message on a pigeon and that thing would get to where it needed to be somehow and give you a, I mean, that's crazy to think. Like, to me, that's actually cooler than the way that we operate now <laughs> with phones. If we could bring that back, that'd be all in. Fantasy for me as well. All right, Sports Grid 60 is coming up next. And then we got the early line coming up at the top of the hour. And I'll be back with you at 2 o'clock Eastern on Newswire. So stay with us here on The Grid. Davis and I'll be right back. Don't go away. Great, great. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live win. prime oh, time. The PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. And in some of these recent starts, he's going for 10 and 11 strikeouts. So if a high strikeout team against a pitcher that is allowed to go deep into the game, he does not have a short leash, he's out there, and he's shown that high ceiling to get to double-digit strikeouts. So over 5.5 is hitting up plus 130. As long as the rain cooperates, I think that that is in a really good spot to pl uh, probably blow past this, and I'll also be looking to probably 7-plus strikeouts on his alt line as well. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I'm telling you, I wouldn't stop there. I'm, I'm asking for a number one as well. My goal would be to, as the GM, would be to get every talented player I can for him, because that's what he's worth. Look what they got for Gobert. Get every talented player you got and a traffic. My goal is to leave you naked at the altar when it's all said and done. You got Durant, you got Thompson, you got Dre Green. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Harlow, it's the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Daily Numbers game. Soccer star Mbappe has become a significant entrepreneur, the French soccer scene, as well as in all sports. Venus Williams on his board of directors. He just signed a deal with Sorare, a company valued at over $4 billion with 250 sports organizations to drop NFPs, but also to generate significant philanthropy for disadvantaged youth all over the world with his soccer platform. That company itself, involved with Bundesliga, La Liga, and other major soccer institutions, Mbappe has also generated a significant relationship with the NBA through a production company. Shows that there are many players that are above the fold that are using their fame and likeness not only to generate significant revenue, but also to help disadvantaged athletes and disadvantaged fans. 
Sports Professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. All right, we got to get Davis out of here because he can't wait for this Twins White Sox game set to start in a couple hours from now, probably in the background of Davis's work. Let's see what's on his mind today. Here is his Sports Grid 60. You know, I will have the uh, the men's Wimbledon quarterfinal on. We got Nadal playing right now. We got Nick Kyrgios playing. There, there's some good tennis, but. Uh, I just I just want to tell people golf is really hard. So I, I told you on the show, I've been getting some lessons. I Craig, I went to the range yesterday, bucket of 100 balls. I mean, I was about ready to quit, honestly, because you once you get to the point of trying to basically rebuild how you hit the ball from the ground up, I mean, you'll be spraying them left, you'll be spraying them right, you'll be topping them, you'll be popping. I mean, I, it just feels like I literally cannot hit the ball. It is so frustrating. I, I don't get mad golfing very often but i i was like i was steaming mad on the range last night so i just just want to remind people it's it's very hard it's very hard very very hard i'll be back out there saturday as well though it's very hot here hard to play yeah um all right so got the word from our executive producer greg sussman the other day our fantasy football content is going to be really picking up in the month of august in fact, the third week in August, we begin our shows live every Sunday morning, helping you draft, helping you get ready for fantasy football season. So those of you yearning for fantasy football content here on Fantasy Sports Today, trust me, it is picking up and it is coming really soon. But love doing that show last year. Very excited to be back on that show once again with Joe Pizapia and Matt Stryker this year. Again, that's coming in the third week of August. And that will do it for our show today. Thanks again to Dubs for coming on the show, previewing the Scottish Open. Dubs will be back with us, of course, next week, previewing the British Open as well. Thanks to, of course, our graphics department and, uh, of course, LTN, our producer, Brett Levy, and my co-host, Davis Maddock. I'm Craig Mish. I'm going to go grab a bite to eat, and then I'll be back with you guys at 2 o'clock Eastern for another edition of Newswire. Until then, have a great day. Great, great.